Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Sonia from An Enthusiastic Reader, and I'm here to talk about my favorite reads from 2018. Uh, I Every year I create a list, uh, I write it up, a little write-up of all the books I liked in the previous year, and I post them on Facebook for family and friends, and so I'm using that list that I posted the other day as the basis for this video. Um, I will probably not talk about the books too much, but maybe do a future video on a few uh, novels that I have never seen talked about on BookTube before. But today it's just the list and uh, I don't want to make it too long, so let's get started. Um, when I started the beginning of 2018, one of my unwritten goals, because I really don't write goals down for my reading in a year, is to say I would not read too much new front list, new release books. And it turned out I read quite a few, even though I had vowed not to. Uh, I just couldn't stop myself from reading a few that people were talking about, and I wanted to know for myself if I liked those books or not. So this is my list of favorite new novels. Um, first one on the list is How to Be Safe by Tom McAllister. This is about the aftermath of a school shooting and uh, the consequences for a small town and in particular, a person who was falsely accused at the beginning of the shooting. It's a lot about misogyny, and it's also about how we really just love uh, and relish in violent culture in America and don't really worry about the uh, victims or the victims' families once a uh, shooting has happened. The second novel uh, is a transracial adoption novel called That Kind of Mother by Ruman Alam. This is a novel about a poet and her husband who through a set of circumstances end up adopting an African-American baby. And they may have the best of intentions and want to raise this child and love him as their own, and they do, but their good intentions kind of don't always pan out. So it's a lot about violence and it's about adoption and love and growth. The third novel is Transit by Rachel Cusk. This is the second in a trilogy. I've read the first and second installments and have yet to read the third. It's about a writer named Faye who's grappling with a major life change when she gets a divorce and she has two children, but she never talks about her life really in first person. I'm the narrative that we're provided in these first two installments is the writer just recounting conversations she's had with people throughout the day. So, and we don't see the dialogue, so we don't analyze for ourselves what is said between she and the other person. We have to infer meaning from what she's choosing to tell about these anecdotes. It sounds kind of boring. It's really my kind of thing. Fourth is Red Clocks by Lenny Zumas. The premise of this, I'm sure you've heard, is a conservative government is elected in the United States and they decide to completely upend all personal freedom for reproduction and gynecological services for women. And there are four characters and each character is kind of playing out the logical consequences of those laws in the narrative. Next, we have Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. Uh, I know you've heard about this as well. It's about a woman in modern Tokyo who cannot conform to gender and societal norms, but finds great comfort and her own personality as she becomes a perfect cog in a Japanese convenience store corporate culture. It's just a novella, but there is a lot packed into those few pages. I really like this and I'd like to read it again. Then we have Asymmetry by Lisa Halliday. This is a love it or hate it type novel. Not everyone loves it. Some people think it's pretentious. They don't like the writing, but I loved the writing style. It's just right up my alley. And the first part is about a young woman who has an affair with a world renowned novelist. And the second part is about an Iraqi American who's detained in a British airport. Uh, we get to see his past his and his present as he grapples with not really filling part of society in either Iraq or the United States. A really powerful narrative. And I just think the whole novel works really well together. 
give it a chance. Circe by Madeline Miller. That's made the rounds on BookTube on many best of 2018 lists. I really like myth retellings, and this is the story of a daughter of a god who is scorned, hated, and exiled to an island because she's made her father unhappy. And then Odysseus comes along, and it's essentially a retelling of the Odyssey, or at least that part of the Odyssey, from the perspective of female rage. Great book club discussion book, I think. Next we have Who is Rich by Matthew Clam. I didn't hear anybody talk about this novel on booktube at all. Um, it's about a graphic novelist who's had one major hit in his life with a graphic novel he wrote. And then his career kind of falls off and he's a teacher. He's invited to teach at a writing conference that he's taught at before. So while his marriage is on the brink of disaster and their finances are on the cliff, and they are a completely unhappy couple. He goes off for a few weeks in the summer to teach at this writing conference. I love novels about writers. I love novels about writing conferences. I This has got a lot of funny and humorous elements as well as some very, very um, contemplative passages about morality and about ethics. So he's not just having a midlife crisis, but he's actually evaluating everything he believes in the light of having relationships outside of the marriage. And last, I have Improvement by Joan Silver. Joan Silver has been writing novels for decades, and uh, she's like a writer's writer. She understands human psychology, she understands human behavior, and the inner workings of relationships as well as adding in ideas about morality and values and what we tell ourselves about ourselves. This particular novel, each chapter has an, its own character, but they are all connected by a fateful decision by one of the characters. It was really good. Uh, I think it was on a few prize lists, maybe the short list, but if you have never read Joan Silber, I'd say please pick up one of her novels, either from the past or this most current iteration, and see what you think, because you might just find a new favorite writer. My favorite rereads from this year are The Age of Grief by Jane Smiley, Old Filth by Jane Gardem, and Howard's End by E.M. Forster. I also give a shout out to the audiobook of American Wife by Curtis Sittenfeld, which is a fictional retelling of the life of Laura Bush. It was, um, was the best audiobook experience I had this year. Uh, I, it's about 24 hours long. I listened to it at full speed, not sped up, as I went for walks in the morning, so it took me a couple of weeks to get through it, and I really liked being that immersed in a really epic, long life story of a character. So. Another great uh, audiobook experience I had was Calypso by David Sedaris. Uh, this is a little bit more poignant and heartbreaking than some of his previous essay collections. So hearing him read it out loud, just it worked for me. Some notable memoirs I read this year, Old in Art School by Nell Irvin Painter, Becoming by Michelle Obama, in Pieces by Sally Field, which is much more literary and less name-droppy celebrity memoir than I thought it would be. It was very, I mean, there are name there is name-dropping. She knows a lot of famous people, but it was much more about the evolution of herself as an actress and a mother and a woman than it is about a tell-all with other celebrities, though there's a, just enough of in, that in there to keep you going. Um, also, I loved Educated by Tara Westover, and of course, I Am, I Am, I Am, 17 Brushes with Death by Maggie O'Farrell was the highlight of the memoirs that I read this year. For nonfiction, I read Meg Jo Beth Amy, The Story of Little Women and Why It Still Matters by Anne Boyd Rue, and Prairie Fires, The American Dream of Laura Ingalls Wilder by Caroline Frazier. I loved both of these books. I love books about books and about literature and about writers. So 
Uh, I, Jennifer from Insert Literary Pun Here did a very good review of Prairie Fires and so did Kendra Winchester. So I will link those below if you want to know more. I can't say how much I enjoyed and think an achievement that book is. And I read a bunch of backlist novels also. And the notable ones are Cheerful Weather for the Wedding, which was a novella by Julia Strachey. I read Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell, Strange Weather in Tokyo by Hiromi Kawakami, The Saga of Ghoster Burling by Selma Lagerlof, Wildfire at Midnight by Mary Stewart, At Mrs. Lippincoats by Elizabeth Taylor, Half a Lifelong Romance by Eileen Chang, Troubles by J.G. Farrell, a God in Ruins by Kate Atkinson, and finally The Bell by Iris Murdoch. I'm going to link below um, a little essay that appeared in the New York Times this week about how much the author of the essay loves reading the novels of Iris Murdoch, how weird and psychological and dramatic and thoughtful those novels are, as well as funny. Please let me know what you thought of the list if you have any books on this list you read and liked or didn't like and also please let me know what your favorite book was of 2018 if you have a chance uh, or let me know if you've done a video and I haven't seen it yet I'd like to know what everybody's thoughts are on the last year before we plunge into the next year so thank you to all my new subscribers I'm glad to see you I really appreciate you subscribing and watching and thank you so much and I will see you all in the next video Bye-bye.